Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Elite Chronicles with your host Buckrabbit. Today we're going to be opening up an engineer and the engineering question is Felicity Farseer. Now Felicity wants a meta alloy. Now to do that we need to jump down there and get one. Now the location we're going is Hades Sector AQY D81 because there's a barnacle site down there with meta alloys. Now with the proceeds from the mining I bought myself a Diamondback Explorer and here is how I've outfitted it. So we have no weapons because we need to save weight and we're not going to go into any combat. The utility mounts is a point defense and a heat sink launcher. Point defense isn't much use at the moment, but uh, that will come back come in use later when we do guardian sites. And the heat sink launcher is good for any explorer. Core internals: we have a 4A power plant because we want something that's going to last. 4A thrusters so we don't get caught out by high G planets. A 5A frame shift drive, which is the best they do uh, for this particular model. 3D life support because it's light. 4D power distributor because it's light and a 3D sensors because they're light and the, the 5C fuel tank is standard. Uh, in the optional internals we have a 4A fuel scoop because that's the biggest it will take. We have a 4E cargo rack. Don't necessarily need the cargo rack but uh, we'll take it anyway. We've got a 2G planetary vehicle hanger which gives us one SRV and a 3D shield generator. Now these two are empty because usually I have auto repair modules in those but you can't get two A's in 10 so I don't want to buy them and we're not going particularly far so we don't need them at the moment and a detailed surface scanner what I might actually put on here is a super cruise assist which we do have one so let's, let's use one shall we because that will get us to our destination and that is basically that really so I've plot the course using the navigation and the galaxy map and here is our course in total now the place we need to go is all the way down here and there is Felicity but we need to go all the way down here to get the meta alloy I think we've got everything else that we need, so let's get underway. We're going to be scanning the systems all the way there and all the way back. So we can sell that data. So I did do quite a bit of mining. So I bought a few ships, but you'll be able to see them soon. The DBX is definitely a, a taxi for the bubble. But we've got 11 jumps to do. Let's just make sure that that is on the scanners. Got full pips to engines. Away we go. Wait until we're out of mass lock. And now let's do a frame shift. We could have just done the frame shift to be fair. But all the way down we're going to be recording data. We'll see if there's anything interesting. So we jump, scoop, scan. There's only one body in there. So we're just going to buckyball it for now. 
And buckyball is slang for just jump, jump, jump. Just do it very quickly. We're going in, we're going in full throw. You just gotta wait for the, the fuel scoop to automatically start picking up fuel. You don't want to get too close. I fly without orbit lines, but you might find it easier if you leave them on. So we're just literally grabbing a little bit of fuel from each sun we encounter. And we're scanning everything on the way. Sometimes you forget and do it again. There's 10 bodies in this system. You'll find that most of the systems that have proper names have already been discovered, have already been colonized, There's ships there. But for the most part, you're just passing through. Unless you didn't pack a field scoop, in which case you're stopping. Three hundred and forty three per second. Just scoop that up, keep going. And eight more jumps, it's not long at all. Now we are going down into the beginnings of Thargoid space, so there may be a chance that we'll get high predicted. Maybe. But we'll just have to wait and see. We're actually heading for a barnacle site, which is Thargoid Central. But you'll get to see a barnacle site, which is nice. Usually people will go down to Maya to pick up the metal alloy. But this is a lot closer. So it makes more sense to do it this way. If you're into exploring, this is what you'll be doing a lot of the time, along with scanning along the way, looking around, seeing what you can find, which a lot of people enjoy. I mean, I know I enjoy it, but right now I want this ship, in fact I want all of my ships to be able to jump further. I mean, the jump range on this isn't particularly bad, I'll show you in ship and yeah it's uh, currently 36.31 so hopefully we can get that up quite a lot through engineering Scanning along the way. I might stop for a full, full load of refueling soon. There are some stars that you can't actually scoop from, so you gotta watch out for those. KGB foam are the stars you want. Some are better than others. 
if we get a neutron star, I'll show you how to do that. Jump, scoop, honk, repeat. There's seven bodies in this system. Actually, we'll just slow down a bit. Good thing about the, the Diamondback is it runs really cold. If you do this in any other ship, you'll be overheating by now. Just going to grab a little bit more fuel off this one. What we're doing is just going round the outside of the sun, staying well, well away. Ideally, we want to stay at the end of that spike that comes up from it. Don't want to get any closer than that, otherwise we will start overheating. Yeah, we got a full tank. That bit of red there that you saw, that was Barnard's loop. So we'll be jumping to a class F white star right now. It's a ship. It's behind us, thankfully. We're not actually carrying anything, so we don't really need to worry about pirates. Seven bodies in this system. That's actually not that bad. We can stop and have a look at some point. So I hope you learned something from the Dotem Diamond Core Mining video. I certainly earned a lot of money out of it. And if you're wondering where I found out about all the prices on where to sell those diamonds, then you really want to check out Inara. That's inara.cz. And that will actually tell you how, where to sell your diamonds for the best price. It's a really good website, I'll put it in the link below. And we've got a couple of jumps left to do now. This is where we're going. And the body we want is C2. There should be a barnacle site on C2. So 
you can get a lovely little fanfare when you arrive. Okay, let's just go into the full spectrum scanner. There's quite a few bodies in this system. Let's see if any of them are behind the sun. Don't look like it. I'm kind of guessing. Oh, C2. There's the C star. That is actually where we want to go. C3. C4. Those will be little rocks all around the sun. And what we're doing is we're tuning the bar into the bodies. And what we want is a full circle like that. And there's C2. That's the one we actually want. It's not saying there's any features there though. Very strange. I did actually get this address off someone else, so well, let's go and have a look, shall we? Apparently, it's out there. We'll go to the system map. C two. Just head out there. It's actually behind us. It is 131,000 light seconds away. I am wondering if this is the correct coordinates. So let's keep on scanning, shall we? I'm kind of getting the feeling this isn't the right place. We'll soon see. C7. Because when we scan it, geological highly likely. Geological highly likely. Could be a good good place to get stuff. I'm just gonna tune into all of these. So no features on that one. And on that one. Tuning it in and tracking them down, scanning. Essentially, we're staying in one place, geological. There's still more. These are the big ones. Gas giants. Usually gas giants will be surrounded by bo smaller bodies. As we know, moons. GNO scan, probably. There's quite a few bodies in this system.
Oh, that's pretty. You can kind of see them because they'll they'll just return with little white blobs. Nothing there. There's a significant amount there. No features. As you can see, this can take a while. Once you get the hang of this, you can do it pretty quick. Basically, all I'm looking for some sort of Thargoid or unknown structure. We might have to go and actually have a look. Doesn't seem to be anything more there. Gradient emission, there are signal, signal sources. Over there. There's a few over there. Getting nice big ones. Glass giant. Let's see if we're going to get any moons. Yes, they do. You can see what I'm doing with the bar. I'm just sort of moving it along. I'm picking up everything that returns that signal. There are 65, <laughs> 65 bodies in this system. in all sorts of places. Oh, that's pretty. Might have to go and have a look at that just for the kicks. There's no water worlds or anything here, but water worlds or earth likes. There are plenty of gas giants by the look of it, and moons, icy bodies. I'm just doing distant worlds too. God, the amount of icy bodies. In the end, we just sort of stopped. <laughs> stopped scanning the icy bodies. But there should be a Thargoid site down here somewhere. Thankfully, you, know, you only have to get one of those asteroid clusters to a star, and uh, it pretty much gets all of them. High metal content. All of this is really good cartographic data that you can sell. So it's certainly worth doing, especially if you get terraformables in there then it's definitely worth doing. Big one. There might be a big one around that star. Look at that. Lovely big gas giant. High metal content worlds. Oh, 
Let's look for these last few, shall we? I think they're all around this one. Yep, getting good returns off of those. So we just move it, tune in. I'm not getting a radio station. Any of you are old enough to remember radio stations? None of this dab radio stuff. And there we go, system scan complete. There is one unidentified system signal source out there, which we can probably grab. Okay, so what we're going to do now is look in the system map. This is the one we've got mentioned. Oh, I just saw a Thargoid. There we go, Locations Thargoid in the left. So Locations Thargoid 3. That is actually what we're after. So off we go. Now what we're going to do is just go for it. It's 131 light seconds away. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Ordinarily I would stick on Super Cruise Assist, but the problem with the Super Cruise Assist is that it usually does an average speed as opposed to top speed. It's basically so it gives itself enough time to slow down. I mean, if you're going to use Super Cruise Assist, then the way to do it is just find where you're going. I'm going to C2. There it is. And you do super cruise assist and orbit. So you see that the speed has actually dropped quite a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch off super cruise assist until we get a bit closer. Because now we're running full throttle. It won't actually take that long. But what I'll do is speed up. When you get a location like this, sometimes it's a good idea just to point your ship at it and go and make a cuppa. Because I know that's what I do. It shouldn't actually take 25 minutes, but should be significantly less than that. I think that's why a lot of people watch Twitch streams while they're doing this sort of thing. Want to watch YouTube while they're doing this sort of thing. Or even a movie, Netflix, anything really. There's not much else you can do. There's not much else that's going to happen once you're into a system. If it's, especially if it's an uninhabited system. There's not much hope of pirates out here. You do have to watch for joystick drift though. Might have to check the dead zones on my joystick just to make sure that they're not too low. So seven minutes, roughly. Like I say, it's nowhere near as much as much time as they say it's going to be. We are doing two hundred and 78C that will actually go up and up and up as we get further away from any, any gravitational body so we can get up to 300 350 
And this is our equivalent of warp speed for Star Trek. And I have a bit of a trekkie. A bit. But I'm actually a lot of trekkie. Let's not worry about that. Please don't hold it against me. Yeah, I've definitely got a little bit of joystick drift there. It's a lovely little ship, this. It will literally land anywhere. And when we do the Guardians, this is the ship that we'll take. Because it can land anywhere. You could land this on the head of a pin. I'm flying. You can't. We've got two minutes now. Wow, look at our speed. We're topping out at about 560. We're starting to slow down because we're getting towards gravitation effects from the bodies in front of us. So that's why we're slowing down. Gravity. That's 1 minute 48. say you know you it's really not as long as you think it's going to be so at the moment we're traveling between stars in a system and all of these are generated using Star Forge, I think, or Stellar Forge. So, they're all possible. That's the thing. Although, well, some of the things I've seen you wouldn't think were possible. And there are the odd glitch here and there. that goes through the tail end of a neutron star. That sounds fun. Okay, all these bodies are coming into view now. Just over a minute out. And thankfully, we've got the surface scanner now. So we can find exactly where this site's going to be. Because before, you had to use coordinates, longitude and latitude, to find things. And that was a pain in the butt. Music's good. Sometimes I forget how good the music is because essentially I turn it off when I'm doing my streams on Twitch. Uh, it's twitch.tv slash buckrabbit for those that want to view me on Twitch. I stream Elite five times a day. Uh, five times a day, five times a week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. No, I stream five times a week. Elite is three of those days. So Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays is Elite from 8 p.m. UTC plus one at the moment. And on Friday and Saturday I stream NetWarrior online. Which is big stompy robots. What's not to like? And yeah, my mind is wandering now. Because this takes ages. Like I say, usually what I do is just point it in the direction and go and make a cuppa. Just keep an eye on it. 
And when we get close, jump onto the onto the joystick and um, guide myself in. But as we're recording, I thought I'd give you a little little bit of a chat on the way. Okay, we're getting closer now. And when that bottom number hits ten, we'll slow down. to hit the sun. Wouldn't be the first time. Space is big. Really big. Uh, slow down to 75% of thrust. So 25% thrust. It's a really nice sun actually. Nice and bright. Surprisingly these are terraformable. They might be. I didn't look. A little bit quicker. But we do need to slow down for the scan. Hopefully this will be on the light side so you can see the Thargoid site. We need to get in a bit closer. Because we're going to use our surface scanner. We're going, in, going in a bit too fast right now. We'll just get a little bit closer. Right now, the surface scanner's turned blue. We can scan the surface. Now it needs apparently it needs four probes for this. Um, what you need to do: the broken line is the horizon. So we need to shoot around the body to get the back of it, shoot in front of the body to get the front, and then a couple on the horizon, doesn't matter anywhere, should get us an efficiency bonus. So that's the first one, 25%, 50%. And one more will give us 84%. Oh, that's not good. Alright, we need to go there. That should give us our requisite. Oh no, we've used five. Five probes. Oh well, never mind. If I'd have put that opposite, we would have got it, I think. There we go, 100%. So there's three Thargoid sites on this. So if we go to contacts, there's a barnacle there. It says there's three. Where's number one? Barnacle site. Barnacle one and two, it looks like, are all on the other side of the planet. We'll go to two. So we need to go round to the front. Hopefully it's in sunlight. Quick way to check if it's in sunlight. Switch modes. Yes it is. Because while it's analysis mode, you'll see the mapping. So we need to get down into there. Do it nice and easy. Need to land at this barnacle site. Well, Thargoid barnacles are essentially just growths that the Thargoids have planted. And I'm hoping there's at least one meta alloy here. Because otherwise we will be going to Maya. It's nice and slow. Pips to Sis to reinforce those shields. Nice 30 degree angle, roughly. Trust the glide. Now I know it's disappeared. 
that we can reacquire just by going back to nav. And what you can do is a little bit, little bit of a flyby. Stick it in engines now because we need the thrusters. to view, we'll just slow down a bit. We don't want to get too close, mainly because of the weapons on the SRV will, won't deploy if you're too close to your ship. There's the barnacle site. So we'll get a little bit closer. And let's see if we can land around here. Shouldn't be that difficult. Watch, we're at one third G, so we want a nice blue bit for us. There we go. Once your landing gear's down, it'll tell you whether or not you can land. And that's what we do. So we want to jump into the scarab, and that's panel three deploy. Don't worry about that. So there's plenty of things over there that we're going to be grabbing. So you can see the turrets deployed now. And we want to switch to combat mode. You know, open our cargo scoop. Now the ones we want are these big ones. You see that big sort of polyp? That's what we want. But what we're going to do shoot it, and that big thing will come off. And we target it and pick it up. And that should be a one meta alloy. There you go, one meta alloy. And what you can do is hang around here a bit longer and shoot all of these spires and pick up all of the materials. So we've got iron. Oh, there's iron over there. Problem is, they don't tend to... Uh... It's right in front of you, but you can't pick it up. <laughs> can do it this way but it's a bit time consuming and it's actually quite hard. <laughs> There's another meta alloy there, let's go and get that. Now the SRV can only carry two bits of cargo. So we're just going to chase these things around. nickel. Like I say, all of this stuff comes in handy. Every bit of material you will use. So, just shoot away. Destroy, destroy, destroy. That's niobium. That's nice. So, mind you don't get caught on things. These... SRVs have four wheels on the front, so they're, they're wider on the front than they are on the back. Oh, manganese. Nice. If you find you're having difficulty targeting what's right in front of you... That's carbon. I mean, all of these are quite low-level mats, but you will use all of them, trust me. They're 
and people would probably say I'm not doing this very efficiently, but you know, it's fun. Because they jump too. It's kind of like a quad bike when you're a teenager. You tend to get a bit out of control. And then you've got low gravity, of course. Which is always fun. Yeah, I can do it like this. I can do it nice and slow. But of course, you can't see. Sometimes it's nice just to uh, muck about. Wow, well, that's got a lot of them in there. Look at that. But this is surface mining. This is what you do when you're after all sorts of materials, so. Oh, that's what's in front of me. It does tend to pick up a lot. I mean, what I could do is actually just shoot all of them and then just go around picking up them all the bits. Uh, can I drive for shit? <clears throat> this one. We do have two pieces of metal alloy now. And, uh,. Felicity only wants one, so that's good. Vanandium. <coughs> Sulfur's a good one. More Vanandium. So basically what we're looking at here is uh, a human laying waste to an alien thing. <laughs> because that's what we do. If you've got no uh, thing in between then usually it's a lot, hard, a lot easier to target the stuff on the floor. Yes, yes, I know I'm not doing it efficiently. Over there. Another one there. More sulfur. Like I say, we will be using all of this to do a variety of things. And then we can scan the structure. Because it is actually making a noise. If you listen carefully. I'm kind of hoping a Thargoid turns up, to be fair. Oh, there's one more. So this is all, all that jumping about is about, you know. So we'll scan this with the data link scanner. And we should get a nice scan off of it. Data compromised. So is it? There's still a bit of an iron on the floor there. And there we go. So we've got our two tons of metal alloys. Or two units. They say tons, but you know, it's two units. And we get back in the ship. That's why we have the cargo bay. Look at my lovely little ship. I love the Diamondback Explorer. Such a good little ship. It's robust, it's cool. Right, to get back on board, we can go light up that little blue square on the right. It says board ship. And go to the sub menu, board ship. So now we're going to see Felicity. Let's see how many jumps that's going to be. So the system we want is Desiat. But I've actually got it bookmarked. And plot that route. And how many jumps is that going to be? Nine. 
which is not bad at all. And coming here means I don't go have to go all the way to Maya. So we stick our landing gear up. There you go, quick visit. Just take off landing gear up. Then we come off the planet. Still mass locked slightly. So you literally you're aiming straight up. It will give you an escape vector, and you just follow the escape vector. Put it back in analysis mode. We can actually go around and pick up all the things. We can go to all of those sites, destroy them all, pick up everything. But we only need one for Felicity Farseer. So we just literally put, put our nose down. We're not quite out of the atmosphere area. There's no atmosphere, but you know what I mean. Slightly out of the orbit of the planet below us. Once we are, we can target this. We can highway out. Yes, off we go. See a number of my friends jumping on there. That's one thing that Elite is really good for. Yeah, it's having fun with friends. And this game does actually attract quite a lot of women, believe it or not. So we're just going to buckyball this out to Desia. Or Decate, as some people call it. I think I pronounce it Desia. as much as we can on the way past. Oh, now we have things in our hold, so we've got to be a little bit careful because we're going to start attracting pirates. Now there's the pirate. He's a novice, but I have no weapons. Okay, if you get interdicted, all you need to do is follow the escape vector. Sometimes can fall the interdiction by jumping out. Just like that. It's easy enough to escape. But now we've got two tons of metarolos on board. We are going to be attracting a little bit more attention. So we've got to be a little bit more careful. This is an uninhabited planet, so we can stay here for a planet. Uninhabited system. So we can stay here for a bit longer. Scoop a little bit more. Because this is kind of like a safe harbour right now. And we will probably get interdicted on the way to the engineer. So we just need to be on our guard. Honestly, that guy was a novice, so if, if I if I had any weapons on this, I probably could have taken it. Just saying. I 
hopefully this will increase my jump range by at least 10 light years. That's what I'm hoping, as long as I have the materials. But we'll see what we can do. Let's scoop this. This is, uh, an, um, looks like an uninhabited system as well. So we can stay here a little bit longer and scoop fuel. Basically, if you see any ships nearby, don't hang about. Because there's a good chance they're pirates, and there's a good chance they want your cargo. Because pirates are like that. I mean, I know that it looks like I'm close to this sun, but I'm really not. <laughs> Stay away. Right, let's get away. More jumpy jumpy. Got five jumps left. Let's go. Let's go, go, go. scanning every system on the way because Felicity likes data as well. As long as it's more than 20 light years from our house she gives you money for it which is nice. Let's make sure we scan this system. I know I probably did it but just to make sure. Four jumps left. Was a trinary. So this is the sort of stuff you come up against. Let's uh, just get a little way out, just so we can have a look. Right, we're just going to stop here. Not many ships you can do this with, but I'm going to stop here. Hopefully we'll still be able to see the trinary. I'm going to spin that round. There you go. So we've got the one where above which is down there there's two more so let's just stick my ship in front of it a little bit there we go this is a very hot place to be really and then we'll take a screenshot of that very nice okay this is a this is an inhabited system by the look of it. There are ships here. So let's scoop up and get out. Oh, it's got security, which is nice. Yep, we're not hanging about. Let's get to that. Felicity. I do play in a private group, so there's no chance of hitting hitting any gankers or other players. But it's not to say that, you know, that couldn't be interesting. But at the moment I've just been all that way to get meta alloys, I do not want to lose them. Which is fine. You know, play as you like. Most of the time I'm in our private group. Which is the Terrorhawks, which is attached to our account. 
for the squadron. We have two more jumps. Let's see how they start. The systems start to be named, and that means that they're probably colonised. I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of this system. And one more jump, and we'll be in Desia. And that's where we will use Super Cruise Assist. I'll get around the sun. Civil War. You get a bit of system information before you jump there. So apparently there's a civil war happening in Desiat right now. Which potentially means pirates, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. to head for Farseer Inc. Now I have it bookmarked, but you'll be able to find it in navigation. There is actually a, a station here. There you go, and I'll have the hexagon of the engineer. And it will be marked we're going to use Super Cruise Assist on this one because it's not particularly far. Then you can see what it does when we get there. I think for most of you, Felicity will be the first engineer that you unlock. So I hope you find this video informative. And then we'll just show you how to unlock her and uh, do the first bit of engineering on your ship. Obviously, you could have done this in any ship as long as you have an SRV. Jump ranges vary. I could just as well have done this in the Cobra. But the fact is that I like the Diamondback, and it will become my permanent explorer ship. I'll also show you all the other ships that I've bought soon in the next video. But low temperature diamond mining is very lucrative. Let me tell you that. We have contacts. So we might as well scan them. Might get something out of them. Not that one. You're being a bit stingy, aren't you there, mate? Oh, there's a big one. There's an anaconda, it's a big one. Usually I get something out of those. Okay, so... Three Federal Navy ships. No scans. That sucks. There'll be more. As we get closer, there'll be more shi more ships. Because ships come and go from places like this. So you got to be on the lookout. Because the more scans you get, the more engineering you can get, and the better your ship will be. Coming into the moon now. I'll just let Super Cruise Assist do its thing. So I actually think that it's on that side of the planet. So we're going to line it up. 
I mean, what I could do is actually just come out of Super Cruise Assist and take care of it from now on, um, and that's what I'm going to do. Let's deactivate the Super Cruise Assist. Take over. So, you know, it's just like autopilot. Oh, well, we're going too fast now. Which is fine because it's on the other side anyway. So we just need to rotate round. And there we go. So far, see, ink is down there. It's on the dark side, so we're going to need some night vision. We're just coming to land about a 45 degree angle, roughly. Don't worry about that for now. It should clear. There we go. I'm doing 55 degrees, which isn't too bad. It's 0.07G. So it's not that bad. I'm pretty much barrel into this one, to be fair. Now, pips to sis. Just going to glide in now. See the night vision starting to kick in. And if you get this right, you'll actually end up about 10 kilometers from the station. Or even right inside. Perfect. That was actually not bad. So we'll just request docking. I've still got auto dock. Yeah. Yeah. I've flown around enough, damn it. So pad one, which is directly below us now. Let me just let the auto dock take care of it. Don't let anyone tell you any different. If you want to use auto dock. Just use auto dock. It's like tech shaming. Okay. Let's open up Felicity Farseer. That sounded wrong. Straight to Starport Services. Refuel. Go to the workshop. And you will donate. Your metal alloy, donate one. Here we go. That opens up to grade one access. All right, before we do anything else, let's go to Universal Carter Graphics and sell all of the data. We just got over a million on this page. So that's a million credits we picked up just from flying out and flying back and scanning everything on the way. So there we go. So it's back into the engineer's workshop. Now the one we want is full spectrum scanner. Not sp no. <laughs> Frame shift drive. Muppet. All right, we don't want faster because we're not a combat ship. We don't want shielded because we're not a combat ship. What we want is increased FSD range. And for that, we need atypical disrupted wake echoes. So you just click the button and it will go up on the scale it will also go up on this scale with the access level and that's why we set we sold that data to her because now we have grade 3 access so that was one roll we need to do another roll and one more but before we do that we'll look at the experimental effect now these give you a little bit more out of the engineering. Now for this particular FSD we want to go for mass manager which will increase our jump range even further. Anything four or lower you really need deep charge but for this one I find that mass manager is the best one and that will give us even more jump range. So we want one more roll on atypical wake echoes Nope, nope, not that one. Oh, 
one more. Oh my god. Actually, you can actually skip it. Just keep an eye over on the left. Because you can actually skip that. Shouldn't have bothered with that one. So we need a little bit more. Sometimes you get good rolls, sometimes you get bad rolls. We should be able to skip that one now. But we don't have any strange wake solutions. So, to get around this problem, we will pin this blueprint. Now what that means is, we can access this engineering, which is increased FSD range, from any station with the remote workshop. So we don't have to come back for this. What we do have to come back for is the experimentals. You can't do those remotely. Okay? So let's see what else we can get while we're here. Felicity is a really good engineer. You can get a lot of stuff done with hers. Now for this we're going to go with dirty drives. Because they sound dirty. But we'll see what experimentals we can get. Now we can't get any experimentals because we don't have the required materials. Which is fine. We'll just have to go with the standard stuff. But while you're here, you might as well get as much done as you can. Because you can only pin one blueprint. And to be honest, the only one you should be pinning with Felicity is the increased FSD range. So, surface scanners, we'll just expand that probe radius, that'll just make it easier. But we need some mechanical scrap, so we can't do that. Done the engines, the power plant. We're going to armor the power plant, we've got plenty of those. You'll hear that noise, but don't panic. And let's go for an experimental effect. We can double brace this, which will increase its integrity. So we might as well do that because this is an explorer. So we want to make sure that that lasts. Because the power plant is the only thing you can't repair. Okay. That's, um, these are the ranks that she can do. And she can only do rank 1. So we'll go for sensors. And what we're doing here is lightening them. You can have long range, wide angle. These are usually for some sort of a attack ship. But for an explorer ship, which is this, we want to lighten the load. So we're going to lighten this up a bit. Alright, because it's round more than 45%, we can jump to the next one. That's where that manganese came in handy. Not quite. One more roll. And we don't have these components. So these components we need to get before we can progress. So we might as well just top that one out. But I can't because I have no selfish alloys. So they're the materials that we need to get hold of. And you can find out a lot of this stuff via Anara. So let's have a quick look at our jump range now. Now we've got a jump range of 49 unladen. 44 current that's because we've still got stuff in our inventory which is limpets and meta alloys can actually just sell that and probably sell that to her Let's see if she's got commodities market no she doesn't so we can't sell that but what we can do is hold on to it and give it to one of our friends so that's what we're going to do well I know this one's been a bit longer than the last ones but as you can appreciate, there's a lot to get done and a lot to do. But I hope you've learned something and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care, Commanders.